Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We have a breaking story really evolving right now. He said, she said, really. Bachelor Happy Hour, the podcast, we thought was being canceled, but it turns out they're just replacing Michelle Young and Becca Kufrin. And, you know, it's probably a shame they're replacing Michelle Young, but the real star here was Becca Kufrin. She ran this podcast through the pandemic. She took this podcast on the road while she was on Bachelor in Paradise. It's really been uh, her. It's been her show and not only is she ousted but they're not even letting her say goodbye we've got katie thurston here commenting how sad to not even let the girls say bye or thank them for their time as previous hosts we even have thomas of course engaged to becca kufer and saying yeah we would have liked that too of course that being the idea with that they got a chance to say goodbye it's a fascinating story and we're going to cover it all right now do me a favor follow me on instagram at d neil's patreon com slash Dave Neal for behind the scenes bonus content. I'll be live at the 10 a.m. hour this morning. I'm doing an 8.30 a.m. podcast with Kate Casey, so you'll catch my recap on her channel, plus our recaps over here. Do me a solid. If you haven't already, double check, make sure you're subscribed. Sometimes YouTube will auto unsubscribe people. And whenever you're watching my content, please hit the like button and leave a comment. It really helps the algorithm as we're trying to build back into the season and get new audience. I appreciate you all so much. Every afternoon, new Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast. So the idea that corporations are psychopathic is something we talk about all the time. The idea that corporations don't care about their employees, they're just going to do what they can for their bottom dollar, and the fact that there's multiple people working. So if this, if, if I were a mom and pop shop company, and I had a podcast, and I had Becca as my employee for three years, you think I would do more than just fire her, right? But in corporations like this, people can pass the buck to different folks. We're going to get into how this affects um, uh, Becca Kufrin here, but first, let's hear what Wells has to say about his time negotiating his contract on Bachelor in Paradise. It'll tie together. Hold on one second here. Let me hit the uh, unmute button. Negotiate like a 25-30K guarantee. Yeah. If they have to guarantee me that money, if I walk in there day one, they're not going to let me go day two. That's not true. If there's a good exit for you, you'll we'll take it. I didn't renegotiate my deal until maybe my fourth season of being the bartender. Why? Everyone fucking wants that job. And I know all the people who have tried to come and steal my job from Bachelor Nation. And if you don't think that I don't have like a little Rolodex in my head you of all it. the people. You give uh, me one. No. Like so... So what we're talking about here with Wells is he knows it's a lucrative job being the bartender on the show. It's not like rocket science what he does here. It's like he serves drinks and he talks, you know, it's it's he's good at it, but anyone on the show, if the show wants to, could replace him. It's a replaceable job. Hey, Chris Harrison, you know what I mean? It's replaceable. And when something's replaceable, it can be very cutthroat. He was only making $400 a day. And you might say, well, Dave, that sounds like a lot of money. First of all, the Screen Actors Guild minimum is like $900 a day. And that's for eight hours worth of work. He probably made 400 bucks a day for like 12 hours worth of work. Do you know what I mean? So if you think that's a lot of money, eh, you know, it's it's nice, but that's not like he's making $400 a day, 365 days a year. They only filming for 20 days or so. So not that lucrative, but he knew if he tried to negotiate his price, they might replace him. All right. So that takes us to what the heck is going down here um, with, uh, with Becca and uh, her tenure on Bachelor Happy Hour. So here's what she said originally, and then we'll get the updated comments. I've actually received quite a bit of DMs regarding Happy Hour. Uh, it's obviously been a while since there's been any recordings or since I've even talked about it. Um, it's just time for some different things, but I will forever be so grateful and thankful for all of the fans and listeners out there. I mean, I've worked on Happy Hour for three plus years through COVID, through some crazy life transitions and big moves and touring. Um, it got me through all of that. And I couldn't have done it without all of you incredible listeners. So thank you for tuning in and standing by me and for all of the support for, throughout the past couple of years. It means the world. So you can see it right at the very end, show some emotion. Now look, Podcasting's not an easy game. When I when I rail on Bachelor Happy Hour, it's not a criticism of Becca Kufrin. She's a sad byproduct of people that do what they're supposed to do for the company and then get nothing after it. You know what I mean? So probably wasn't making that much money on the show. 
Um, and if it was a contract issue, they still could have given her a big send off and let her go and all that. So when Game of Roses posted this Instagram story from Becca, they said breaking bachelor happy hour is over. No, it's not. This was yesterday. And of course, here's what Thomas said before we got the update from bachelor happy hour. We have a new parent baby comprehension. So he's talking about the fact he's not watching Bachelorette because he's got a new new baby class on Monday nights and then he brings up the Bachelor happy hour stuff. At, as priority um, without saying too much I'm not exactly thrilled with some of the decisions and directions that have been going on behind the scenes over the last last several months so I probably will not be tuning in and then at the same time I've actually only watched Bachelor in Paradise um so I don't, I don't see that, I don't see that trend breaking on this one. But Charity, I wish you the best of luck. I hope you find happiness and love, and I hope that's continuing for you today. So, go get him. Tight. So he says he doesn't like the behind the scenes stuff of what's going on, and you go, oh, we have ourselves a conspiracy. Did the show conspire to remove Becca Kufrin? Now, of course, Michelle Young, and into all, with all due respect to Michelle Young, she wasn't good at it. She wasn't good at the format. Becca Kufrin had sort of carved together this format, and she did it for much longer than Michelle. So by the time Michelle came along, it was kind of a fast-moving train. I don't know anybody ever when I've when I've commented about this that has defended Michelle Young here and said, "No, Michelle's great. No, maybe she is good. Maybe she'd be great on a one-on-one. -on -one. But as far as chiming in and interjecting, especially as they do it through Zoom, not good at it. Uh, but uh, the commenters they have the right idea. Someone said, "Y'all should pivot. Pivot." Your comedic talents and analysis are wasted on a franchise no one has stamina for. Well, I would I would push back and say it's not that no one has stamina for the franchise. I mean, our channels are full time. Like we have plenty of audience members. It's the fact that they're not sharing their true authentic self. So because there is a soullessness within the corporate podcasting, just the corporate brand of it all, it's very much a franchise restaurant. Everything starts to look the same. The hamburger and fries look the same. The awesome blossom appetizer the cold frosted beer everything starts to look the same there's no culture to it because they can't say everything they want to say about how they feel about the show so bachelor happy hour post this big announcement coming soon um and then uh and then someone said wishing becca and michelle could have said goodbye especially since becca has been doing the podcast for so long hoping they get to introduce the new host for a goodbye moment or something thomas says yeah we would have liked that too it's not about money here it's about a relationship you thought you had with your employer someone said so disrespectful we see it and i see it too and if i could give any advice to thomas and becca not that they need it but to be quite honest i do think there is a value in my consulting to be quite honest i think i figured a few things out here and the advice i would give them and i would very much be willing to elaborate on this on like a long form sort of like help them out but my advice would be Get a content room. They're doing well. They've got the money. I know they're having a baby soon, but get a content room. Get a couple nice cameras, a la Caitlin Bristow style, as she's kind of ramping up her YouTube, and make it a video slash audio podcast. Do it all on your own. Get an assistant to edit it all together. You'll make your money back uh, within the first three months. Absolutely. It'll be an investment and then you'll own it. And then as you talk about your, uh, being a young mother, as you talk about all these life events, your audience is going to grow with you. As we know, my audience has been growing with me. Uh, and, and that's just how it works. No one says, boy, bachelor happy hour. Let's see where they're at in 10 years. No, you don't build lasting fan bases from, uh, from, from hosting a corporate podcast. You just don't. And if you're on a corporate podcast and you disagree with me, that's because you're still cashing the checks but the day you show up to work and find out your clearance code doesn't work because they wanted the uh, the newest brightest thing or the thing that they can get cheaper you're gonna find out for yourself the cold hard truth and that's kind of just the way it is so that's what we have from bachelor happy hour here's what they posted yesterday which let us know that the show itself isn't canceled we thought it was canceled here's what they had to say hey bachelor nation can we steal you for a sec it's time for a new season of The Bachelorette, which means Bachelor Happy Hour is back. 
Charity's journey is about to begin, and Bachelor Happy Hour is the one and only official podcast to the hit reality show. And this season, two new hosts will be taking the reins and putting Charity's men in the hot seat. They'll have exclusive interviews with cast members throughout their journey cool. and will be the first to talk to the men who leave brokenhearted. They'll also share episode recaps and behind the scenes secrets you won't find anywhere else. New season, new love stories, new drama, and new hosts. So pour yourself a drink because the most dramatic reveal is coming soon. Listen to Bachelor Happy Hour on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey. Boo. <laughs> so, of course, Game of Roses is also a fantastic indie podcast. And by indie, I mean they control their own destiny. They said Bachelor Happy Hour is not canceled. The one-minute trailer appeared on the iHeartRadio feed with the same cover art featuring Michelle Young and Becca Kufrin. That's right. They didn't even take Becca and Michelle off the cover. Oh my! That's like if Michelle. That's like if McDonald's decided it was going to now be a Chipotle, but they still had the quarter pounder with cheese. You're a Chipotle now. Get the McDonald's fries out of it. You know what I mean? So anyway, Katie responds. How sad. To not even let the girls say bye or thank them for their time as previous hosts. And then, um, of course, we had, uh, uh, you know, covering it. Claire and Emma said, oh, strange, strange. Pace Case, of course, one of the uh, part of the amazing duo at Game of Roses podcast said, sauce finds a way. So as far as this war goes... It's not looking good for the corporate podcast. So this means clickbait podcast is done. Good riddance. They've got rid of talking it out. I believe that was a uh, bachelor podcast. And they're going to focus all of their eggs in this basket. My guess is, though, if they don't make systematic changes, which to me means setting up a home studio. I don't know where that is. Is it in Los Angeles? Is it in Chicago? Is it in Nashville? Is it in New York? Setting up a home studio, having a three or four camera setup, making it fun, making it engaging. But instead, it's going to be like, all right, let's hear from Caleb. Which Caleb? I don't know. Caleb A, Caleb C, Tanner 2. Oh, great. Wow. Tell me about your episode. And you know what's going to happen? We're going to watch it. We're going to pull out the highlight, the only interesting part of an hour-long conversation, and we're going to make it better because you know what I'm doing? I got the thing on life support, and we're going to bring some life to it because the energy in the corporate world is just not there. Oh, Dave, you have such a bone to pick with these corporations. Prove me wrong. If you're a content creator, guys, listen up. If you're a content creator... Own your own intellectual property. Own the IP. You have to have control of your destiny. Becca has nothing to show from this. She doesn't have an email list. She doesn't have access to the RSS feed. She doesn't have access to the website. She is gone now. Now, don't get me wrong. Becca's got her own Instagram, and she'd recover in a second. But as far as any momentum she gets from the show, when her last paycheck is cashed, that is it. That is it. And that's where it stands. I would love to know what you guys think about all this. Is there anyone in the world who's going to be defending the corporate Bachelor podcast? Please let me know. The only thing that the corporate Bachelor podcast has going for it is it has exclusivity for guests. Luckily for us, nobody cares. Luckily for us, due to the free, uh, was it a free trade? What's the clause here? The commentary clause? We get to watch it and comment about it and spice it up and we can do that through, our, through my perspective, at least, if you like what I do. So here's Michelle. She doesn't seem to care too much. Doing things I never thought I would do. Such an amazing opportunity working with this production company. So there she is. She's um, on a new movie. We don't know what she's playing, what's going on there, but um, we'll have to see. Is it an indie film? It looks pretty indie because, I mean, don't get me wrong. This ain't no student film. Like, it's got very nice equipment they're using, but it's still... Is, I'm assuming if it was anything better than an indie production that there would be more NDAs, like we wouldn't be sharing the monitor screen. But either way, very happy to see what she has in the works. But I'll tell you what, it ain't going to be Bachelor Happy Hour. I'd love to know your thoughts. We will be live um, on Patreon at the 10 a.m. hour, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And every afternoon, we'll have updates to this. I'm in I'm in the DMs right now. We're finding out the updates. But for all alumni from the show that watch my channel, just remember, you are a million times better off being a Dear Shandy podcast, being a Chatty Broads when they existed, being a podcast that exists outside of the contractual obligations of the corporation. You'll make more money. You'll have all of your ownership over the uh, product you're making. And Becca, please, if you're interested, reach out. 
I got plenty of plans for you guys that could take you guys off in two seconds. You, they could far pass a lot of this content that's out there and make a ton of money in the process. All right, let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. We'll be back with more after this. And if you haven't already checked out my Driving with Dave, I'll post it right here. Go check it out.